in this never ending pursuit. You could have taken the easy path, but you would have never ended up on the Beatitudes if you did. So thanks be to God for that. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I always know I'm winning when Paul or Nick puts their head on the microphone. That is a sign of complete success for me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Beatitudes, a podcast for Christian men seeking to follow God's will with humor and holiness and a dash of authentic fraternity. We are back. <laughs> dash. <laughs> dash. <laughs> Sprinkle it in there. That's right. My name is Paul Kolker, and I'm joined, as always, by my bro host, Jeff Scheffelbein. I love liquid and gelatas. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see the previous episode <laughs> to know what that means. And Nick Besner. What's going on, everybody? That's it. He's peppy again. Happy he to is. be here. Came he is. Yeah. I love when we say his name, though, he can't just be like, I'm Nick Besner, <laughs> <laughs> which he li- still likes to do on occasion. It's got to change it up. No, Keep you guessing. It's you good. got a whole moniker thing going. I think there's a whole meme series out there, I'm Nick Besner. Yeah, it's spreading. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy? <laughs> <laughs> question mark? It's, yeah, it's, it's Who put the off. question mark in the prompter? <laughs> Well, we are back with our uh, our awesome guest, Jeremy Robinson. And can, I, can I tell you something? Yeah. Our last show with Jeremy, we did drink liquid enchiladas and liquid sweet corn and liquid bacon and yeah, maple which, syrup. Why? Where do you even find that oh. sort of thing? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> many years ago, I had this surgery. <laughs> To share. What? Speaking of liquid enchiladas, what? Oh, yeah, what is the transition here? There is this thing that happens every once in a while where half my face feels really hot, and is my ear red? Because I feel a like, little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. burning right now from the liquid enchiladas. <laughs> That, that, that the, stuff is probably unhealthy. The surgery part was how many medicines they pumped in me after this back surgery. So I was like full of all this stuff, and it shows up when I liquid <laughs> when I liquefy my meals. Yeah, no. a liquid no. enchilada. <laughs> That's what a wonderful that? meal. That's a deep cut for those Beatitudes out there. no worries <laughs> if you got none of your teeth. <laughs> it's a problem free. No. Uh, All right. I was trying to okay. think of how to set your ear on fire in the song, oh. but it just it didn't work. My ear's on fire. <laughs> Anyways. It did work. Yeah, I was getting there. Paul? Yes. All right. Wow. Well, we're gonna we're gonna dive right into our game. So we yes. go back though and watch the the awesome episode. Jeremy shared so much about his faith journey and and how he arrived at where he is today. It's he it's, nailed it. It's it's he awesome it. stuff. Nailed it. Yes. But he's gonna have to now play the, a different variation of the game that we normally play called Blessed Are the Joke Makers. Uh, no points up at this one because it's a uh, it's a twist on it, right? Oh wow! Oh, oh okay. No points. No points. Yeah, I think that's an interesting <laughs> twist. We've, he still can award somebody for being the best at this thing. Okay, sure. This is worth twenty seven points. <laughs> wow. Okay, so he, he lowballed us. <laughs> okay, All All right. going for two. So here's how this is going to work in this version of the game. Everybody gets a character card, and we don't know what they are. So I'm just going to mix oh, you're them up. Shuffling them. Yeah. Wow, you look like. Vegas. Thanks. Yeah, no. And, and would you like to double Slide down? Slide hand, watch okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so what's going to happen is we're not going to reveal our character, but as that character, we have to try to telegraph to Jeremy who we are by answering the same question. So we're all answering the same question, different character, and we've got to try to lead you down the path to be able to guess who we are. The, guess the character. Guess I the like character. this one because I already got a chance to look at it, so my brain's already racing. Yeah, yeah give good. yourself a little this little good. moment there. No, yeah, I feel like helps. I cheated, but yeah. No, that, that does We're help. Good. Paul just gets okay. that advantage every and time. And so if I guess, you get the points. Well, it's not. It's, it's yeah, even at the end, be. like, who did it best? <laughs> 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 we want it to be a real competition. Yeah, we hope you get all of them because <laughs> that's how good we are. This yeah. table. No, yes. this table's too tiny for three winners. If you get all of them, though, you can award yourself the points. Hey, I'll take that. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you can always do that. Probably won't happen, but... I'll, I'll, I'll try Jeremy, you can actually give yourself the points for no reason. Also that, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very loose rule structure we have around here. But I we will. do, hey, this is no joke. Your rules will be memorialized because Christopher, our super fan, who also gets 10 points today, is tracking these. And you'll be able to see on YouTube how many points you have. So. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, he's in the comments. Yeah, he's broken it down statistically, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty wild. All right. So the question we are all going to have to answer is the next capital C council, so the next... Ecumenical council. council, right, will be in response to blank. Yeah, the next council is going to be in response to doping in sports. And the 
bottom line is this. I don't care who is doing it. I care about these guns and my abs. You want to see them, Jeremy? Because we don't need to go to council <laughs> to know my abs are in session. That's a weird character. <laughs> I think I, I, think I, I it's got obsessed with something in there. Randy Savage? Well, Mr. Macho. No. So I oh, think there, oh, there you go. Oh, I got it. There you go. Okay. Ooh, our wavelength. Yeah. I could have gone there, which would have been way easier than the weird You got me obsession. on the guns. Yeah. Guns. Brother. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll take the points whenever you It was ready. either that or Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the, uh, the the next uh, council is going to be a response to, you know, uh, maybe maybe I help you uh, get a deal, you know, and uh, in terms of grace, you know, redemption, uh, maybe I could talk to somebody, you know, plea us down to just, you know, kind of an, kind of an easy uh, ride. Oh, my gosh. I have a guess. Is it uh, Charlie? Um, what's his last name? Well, it's not even specific people. They're usually like generic yeah, versions. Like Mr. Macho was not a wrestler. It was just like the macho yeah. person, but... My uh, cousin Vinny is what I'm feeling. <laughs> that's, okay, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that's what I was kind of channeling. It's Poor? Slimy Lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, slimy Lawyer. My cousin Vinny yeah. is perfect yeah. for Thanks. that. That was perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about Saul? Oh, better better call Saul. Better, better call Saul. Yeah, better yeah. Call Saul. There you go. Yeah, yeah. well, Paul, uh, better like that next time. <laughs> well, everybody knows the next council is going to be held in utero. <laughs> I, I can't believe yet another time. I'm, my name is Amanda Scheffelbein. This is the seventh, oh. the seventh time, I tell you. This year. The seventh time. Even It even happened twice at once in, in Jeff's dream the other day. Oh, my gosh. Over nervous Nelly? Uh, I don't know. Constantly pregnant. No. <laughs> That's an incredible card, dude. I should have. And to be very clear, I one time explained to our audience what superfetation is, which is a oh. weird moment where two people, you can get pregnant twice in the same, you can get pregnant when you're already pregnant. In this, it happens 10 times a year in the world, but it's just called superfetation. It's one of Jeff's words that, yeah. <laughs> the word of the day. Um, so what, uh, what say you, Jeremy, on the winner of... 27 points. Man, I got to go with this current trend. Uh, Mr. Shufflebein and Mr. Macho. Yeah. Oh, I 27 the wrong points. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of points out there. This song is like 10 minutes long. This is so. just... <laughs> Keep it going. I just want to say, this. Amanda, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for constantly being pregnant <laughs> so I could channel... You, as I got this car. <laughs> Channel you. Hey, Paul's going to take out the constantly pregnant because we all know that every time that card comes up, we're going straight to Amanda. Um, <laughs> That's it. I am proud of her. She's awesome. Hey, thanks for the points, but really thanks for an amazing game. I, If I was the judge, I would have got both of you. Jeremy's a little nervous. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I got this, man. I'm calm, cool, and collected. You are. Jeremy, on uh, the previous episode, we talked about your film production, all things crew, company, uh, cardboard spaceship. And I look at this logo. It's very clearly a spaceship made out of cardboard, but what's riding it? It is a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. It is a teddy bear. That's you perfect. really took this like uniqueness to another level. I didn't. The uh, company we used to rebrand took our desire and kind of creative language, and then they crafted a story. This is crazy. I kid you not. When they came up with the narrative about what the company actually meant, they came up with a story about a bear that crashed, landed into the earth, and met a little girl. And the little girl went up to the bear, and the bear said, hey, I need to get back to my planet. Can you help me rebuild my spaceship? But she only did what she knew what she could do, and she used her imagination and grabbed a cardboard box and started crafting a spaceship for the bear. It's not about engineering. It's not about the sophistication of a spaceship. It's about creativity and imagination. And together, they rebuilt the spaceship, and the bear got home. And when they told us that story, I'm like, my daughter, when she was four years old, three or four years old, I found her in a box, and she was making something. I said, what are you doing, sweetheart? She goes, I'm making a spaceship. Yeah. I'm like, okay, first off, I've never said anything to, of sorts. I said, well, tell me about this. And she goes, this is my window, and these are my little dials. And I said, where are you going to go? She's gone, I'm going to go to the stars. And that just always stuck with me because it's like her creativity, it's like I was amazed listening to it. So when, when this company that rebranded us 
said that story, it resonated with me. Yeah. It's creativity, imagination. It was it was awesome. So so cool. Um, my wife hates the name, by the way. Oh, <laughs> all right. I had to say that. Yeah. Right. She's cardboard spaceship. That's a silly name. I'm like sweetheart. Yes. Try telling your wife I'm going to spend a lot of time doing something called the Beatitudes. dudes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's working. She's like, you should be called something like film production. I'm like, that's boring. Mm. That's boring. I wanted actually a, a, a juxtaposed idea. Mm-hmm. I wanted somebody to hear a name and go, well, that's kind of crazy. Why mm-hmm. would somebody name their company that? Mm-hmm. And then they yes. see the work that we do. And all of a sudden, it has this unintended consequence of tattooing the name in the yep. brain. And they can't ever get away from it. It's like, well, who did that production? Cardboard Spaceship. There's a couple of yes. uh, companies in our it's industry. Great branding. When you hear their name, you're like, that is the dumbest name mm-hmm. in the world. It happened to me when I first got into the industry. But you hear a couple of these names. Like, there's a company called Stink Films. Mm. You never forget it. I'll, well, I, I'm sorry, who, who wants to? <laughs> I'm going to hire you. You're going to make me a crappy film. Mm-hmm. Stink Films. It's going to be stink. It's going to be crappy. It's going to be, dude. They're awesome. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, they do, like, <laughs> movies and, like, everything. You're like, holy cow. They're absolutely amazing. I'll never forget that name. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like I wanted that juxtaposed kind of idea. It's like I want you to hear our name and be like, huh. And well, then you see what we do, and then they're like, wow. And then they can't forget us. In in the improv world, that's actually we call that A to C thinking, right? So there's you A makes me think of B, but B makes me think of C. And then you can you can see the whole connection, but like the strongest scenes that you would start off, it we get a suggestion from the audience, right? Of like cardboard or something right well then then it's okay maybe that makes me think of fridge but then fridge makes me think of frozen right and so now we're doing a scene where we're both shivering and you yeah. know, like so you, you can see the connection but it, i mean that makes for a more impactful start to the scene and it yeah. makes it stick with you yeah that's incredible very and cool you know you're talking to a guy who named his last company a digit my last company was just a digit Number and, five. And everybody says, five what? And I say, just five. And they say, <laughs> what does that mean? And now I have a conversation about culture and purpose, not about electricity. Because, by the way, electricity is boring. <laughs> it is boring. It's boring. I mean, it's kind of Except a current to an thing. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but, um, I got it. Thank you. I'm, with you. I'm with you, Paul. Yeah. Nailed um, it. You encounter some resistance, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, <laughs> my, oh goodness. my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, you know how many puns. people die every year in America? Sorry. Whoa, what? <laughs> you just <laughs> ruined the joke. I'm gonna, no, it's a quiz question. How many people survive? Because it's a harder one to come up with. How many people survive every year? From electrocution. Is it five? Is that why you went with five? What's your answer? Oh, I, I don't even know. It'd be totally All yes. of them. Electrocution is uh, <laughs> no death by sh- electric oh. shock. <laughs> oh, yeah. Zero. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so if zero. you survived, it's called shock. If you died, it's called electrocution. So, hey, Jeremy, let's go back to cardboard <laughs> spaceship for a minute. I got lots of quiz questions. Oh <laughs> I almost used that on the show, but I was uh, in a previous episode. And I was like, no, that's too dark. Why don't I just bring it up now? Um, Jeremy. <laughs> You're in the creative world. Yes. But you're a man of strong moral virtue, Christian value. I got to believe you see things, you're challenged by things, you have uh, interactions that aren't always in line with what's happening at this tiny table here. How do you keep your moral center and your fortitude in Mm -hmm. the personal journey you're on with Christ um, and honoring, you know, you gave a great example in the last uh, episode about honoring your wife, but also not, you know, taking your morals to some level where you have no business and you're trying to shame people like this, this, this way in which you can be with people and love people without having to conform to what the world is offering to us. Like, what is that like for you? What's uh, the, uh, maybe you uh, correct me on this quote, but <clears throat> it's showing Christ through your actions. And if all else fails, use words. Mm. Right? Christ didn't sit there and say, you got to do this because I'm the greatest. I'm. He led by actions. Yeah. He served, right? He loved everyone. He loved everyone, regardless of you know what people thought at that time. He loved everyone, and uh, that's that's what I take into my work environment. It's first and foremost love everybody for who they are, um, and serve them the best that I can. Um, a lot of people don't realize whenever I'm on set that I'm the CEO for the company because they see me over there doing things that a PA is doing. Yeah, It was really funny. I was on set for a very large uh, client. We were doing several commercials 
and I'm, I'm doing PA work. That's a production assistant. Um, I was getting food. I was grabbing coffee. Get the bagels. I was getting the bagels. I'm not joking. And I sat down, and one of the guys came over and said, so, so what are you like? Um, are you like a, a production assistant? Are you, are you with the brand? And I was like, yeah, something like that. I was like, Is, <laughs> can, I, can I get you anything? Do you need anything? No, he's like, no, I'm good. And walked off. Well, it was like a couple hours later, he found out that I ran Cardboard Spaceship. And he's like, dude, I am so sorry. <laughs> like, I paid his... That's a witness. I paid his paycheck yeah. to be on set, and he didn't realize that I was the guy that, that paid his check. And uh, so it's it's really, first and foremost, loving and serving other people, mm-hmm. um, regardless of what position that they're in. So... Dude, that's a, it says a lot. You could have told him you were an ab model just in case they needed someone to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> at least I a, be an extra. <laughs> at least a bicep. At least a well. bicep model. <laughs> what are you guys talking about, bro? You're Mr. Macho. That's how you identified so quickly with my character. I did. That's I it. did. It was the ego, actually. That's <laughs> I have to ask for that. Fair. That is awesome. The I was, ego. I was not acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, they call me the definition of humility. By they, he means himself exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then I want to kind of wrap it up with this. There are creatives in this world or aspiring creatives, filmmakers, actors, artists uh, who want to grow in their craft, but at the same time, they want to grow in their faith journey with the Lord. They want to continue to pursue um, what it means to have a meaningful relationship with Christ and be a witness in the world. Is there advice, and I'm kind of asking you to package this up here, advice you would give to people who are in a spot of growth or change, or I, I know I have either talent or desire, but I also want to have the same priorities that Jeremy has of God, family, all else. As in, what, what would I give as advice? Yeah, what's advice? Uh, to, to, to Paul 20 years ago. Man. <laughs> you want to put on your your 25 years? Please, yeah. <laughs> I'd say uh, consistency is everything. Mm. Mm. Um, that's the, I would say that's the word of the day for me is consistency. There are times in your life when you question everything that you do, you have doubt. You don't feel God's presence. You don't hear God when you, when you pray. There are times when God calls you to be still. And in that stillness, you can feel alone. And when you feel alone, sometimes you want to give up. If you do any working out or endurance or triathlons, I love triathlons. I've loved working. I love cycling. And people go, why do you love cycling so much? I said, this is kind of an oxymoron. I love cycling because I hate it. Mm. Because anytime I'm on the bike, the bike shows me how slow I can be. Mm. And if I want to get faster, I want to get better. I want to get better endurance. I have to put in the work. And it's really hard. And you you, you fight your mind the entire time. You want to quit. You're, you're slow. Well, in every aspect of your life, business, family, spiritual, there are things in your life that will slow you down and say, you're not good enough. You're not spiritual enough. You're not doing enough for Christ. And it's at, it's at those times, if you allow those inner voices or those inner demons to distract you, you can, you can take 10 steps back. Yeah. So the word I would say to those 20 years younger than me that are looking for inspiration in the industry and maintaining good character and integrity in their spiritual life to remain consistent. When you don't hear God's voice, know that he's near because he may be speaking to you in the silence. If you're struggling in your family, always ask the question. If you've just gotten done with a fight with your wife and you're going like this, you're pointing your finger at your wife, always remember you've got more fingers pointing back at yourself. So the question you need to ask is, am I failing and loving my wife a certain way? Am I not listening to her enough? Am I not serving her enough? What am I doing that's not serving her because serving your other one is love. Same thing in work. So remain consistent. Take that doubt out of your mind, remain consistent, always push forward. Cause if you're not pushing forward, you're stagnant and stagnant can be a cancer to all of us. It's like what our guest, uh, Alex Trevino said, like I'm the problem. Yeah. I can fix it. Like work yeah. on, work on me. Well, how can people find you on cardboard spaceship? What's the website? Uh, it is cardboard-spaceship.com. Sweet. I hope yes. everybody here will check it out. You have incredible work. You are doing top-notch video work out there, but more than anything, you're doing top-notch witness work in your walk with your wife, your family, 
and especially your faith journey in this never ending pursuit. You could have taken the easy path, but you would have never ended up on the Beatitudes if you did. So thanks be to God for that. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I always know I'm winning when Paul or Nick puts their head on the microphone. That is a sign of complete success for me. Ah, uh, yep. Paul, you want to take us out of here? Yep. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you again next week. And until then, we will see you in the Eucharist. God bless. This podcast is part of the Spoke Street Network. For more great podcasts, visit spokestreet.com.